research and discovery. Futurists. Despite the appearance of winter here in a forest in central Finland, it is in fact springtime. The only human activity consists of scientists on the hunt for rodents. They are trying to understand the increase in diseases transmitted from animals to humans. One of the many known as emerging diseases. In the 1940s, there were very few emerging diseases. These days, the numbers are far higher. Renault Lancelot has worked for many years in the field before becoming coordinator of the EU research project into emerging diseases in a changing environment. The researchers have noted that social change impacts disease transmissions as much as climate change. We've seen that in the Central and Baltic European countries, because of the collapse of the Soviet bloc, a lot of people suffered economically, losing their jobs, with no resources. So they started to go to the forest to pick mushrooms, blueberries, wild berries. This contact with nature introduced people to ticks and insects and rodents that could transmit certain diseases to humans. This project studies diseases transmitted by mosquitoes or ticks and rodents. Heike Hentonen has been working with rodents for 40 years. They transmit diseases like hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome, which most of the scientists on the team have contracted. I don't know if I've ever been so sick before in my life, but haven't been too sick actually. And uh, after this one week's being ill like, period, then it took almost another week to, before I started to feel again like uh, that I'm fine. Rodents are the most widespread mammals on the planet and play a key role in the spread of diseases. A mosquito or tick bites an infected rodent. The insect in turn transmits the disease to a human via a bite. When we have a rodent peak, we have human disease, and then the rodents uh, decline, and there is no disease in humans. But uh, it uh, doesn't uh, disappear anything. It is in the rodents, in the forest, but uh, in low prevalence. It's always there. In this way, diseases thought to have been eradicated remain extant inside the rodents. Here, biodiversity is important, as it prevents virus-carrying rodents from becoming too numerous. With the deforestation and so on, that you, you can have tens of species with low densities, and then you destroy the forest for agriculture, for palm oil, anything, maybe one or two species remain, and they can reach high densities. And if they are carrying dangerous viruses, then we get a problem, because the rodent density of the whole species is much higher, and they can spread the virus to humans. To learn how to control these diseases, scientists take rodent samples from across the globe. They combine it with rodent study in their natural habitats. We have to understand the population dynamics of the rodents, because when we understand the rodents, then we know what happens and how the virus is transmitted to humans. Some of these samples, which are sent from all over the world, end up here in Helsinki. The Finnish capital has one of the best laboratories in Europe, devoted to the study of animal-to-human disease transmission. It was here 30 years ago that one virus that causes hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome was discovered. This disease is caused by rodent excrement. Scientists now study samples from both humans and animals. What we are especially doing, we are trying to uh, combine the ecology work, uh, the, the samples from the nature, uh, to then, let's say, uh, basic virology that we are studying, the, the viruses, their genomes, but also uh, patient samples that we're trying to look, do these viruses uh, cause a disease. The results of these genetic analyses are passed on to Montpellier in the south of France. Here, they study rodent genetics. 
First, they classify each rodent, a job that often leads to the discovery of new species. Then they see if the viruses found in one of these species could infect other species of rodents. If we take one rodent species that colonizes a new country or a new environment with all the diseases that they carry, it's important to know if these viruses can be transmitted to the species that are already present in this new country or environment, or if the disease will not be transmitted to local rodent species because this rodent species doesn't have the genetic characteristics that make them susceptible. But how can rodents or other animals colonize a new environment? The answer is simple, in the same way as humans. Rodents, but also mosquitoes and any other animal can take a plane or a boat in containers. And this is one of the causes of the introduction of new species of insects, rodents and plants in new environments. They can invade whole ecosystems. Disease does not respect borders and that's why from the very outset Scientists put the emphasis on international cooperation involving 48 institutes from 24 countries. When we understand what happens locally in different parts of Europe and, and what other environmental and other causes for the disease uh, patterns, then we can make uh, predictive models and we can make risk assessments to, to help people to avoid the disease. The predictive models indicate when and where disease outbreaks may happen due to climate change, new habits or even new viruses or diseases to prepare us for future epidemics. We're building a network of scientists, easy to mobilize, to act against any health crisis that can happen at any moment. If there is an outbreak, we can very quickly find out what is the cause of the disease. Like SARS, it took only a few weeks that the virus was found uh, and uh, with the influenza, the viral strains were found very quickly. The key is anticipation, to act before the introduction or spread of any new disease transmitted by animals. The most effective way to prevent diseases in humans is to control diseases in animals. 